It's really impossible to do a series of videos on books about Spain without talking about Ernest Hemingway. It was through his work that I was first introduced to the country and the mystique surrounding the country. The first book of his that I read on Spain was called, it might have been the first book that I read by him, was The Sun Also Rises, which was published in 1926. The British title is Fiesta. I might like that title more. Anyway, it's about a bunch of people, a bunch of foreigners who experience El Festival de San Fermín, which is now internationally famous because of this book. Bulls running through the streets, uh, the Basques running before those bulls, the bull runners, and all the bulls ending up in the bull ring where later in the day they're fought by the best bullfighters in the country. We'll talk more about that book in a second. But I wasn't drawn to either that scenario or to Hemingway because of San Fermin, per se. I was drawn more by the kind of macho iberico, that's a kind of word meaning like the ideal Spanish man that Hemingway puts before us this mystique of a man of few words, reserved, never acts impulsively, but always acts decisively, always attentive, acts passionately too, completely accepting of the consequences without complaint. All right, maybe another way to put it would be someone with poise and composure grit, sangre fria, cold-blooded, but not in the sense of a murder, you know, sang froid, right, cool-headedness before adversity, injury, bad luck, victory, loss, the threat of death, death itself, okay, and in Hemingway, right, that man is really exemplified by a bullfighter, a man also with style, okay? To me, it seemed like an ideal, well, it was an ideal that I aspired to, and in many ways still aspire to, okay? So let's go through the books now, the books that Hemingway wrote about Spain. So Hemingway saw his first bullfight in 1923. He was 24 years old and in Pamplona. He was immediately hooked, all right? The Sun Also Rises was published three years later. In 1926, he was only 27 years old. The book, the first 60 pages of the book take place in Paris, where we meet all the main characters. Jake is a narrator, he's a journalist, an American journalist who was injured in World War I, left physically impotent, there's the woman he loves, a British woman, Lady Brett Ashley. She also loves him. The tragedy that runs all throughout the book is that this love they have for each other can never be physically consummated. It eats at them both. Lady Brett Ashley has settled for marrying or she's engaged to this lush of a British guy named Mike who has all the status she needs as an aristocrat, but she doesn't love him. She sleeps around on him with various men. There's also a very important character named Robert Cohn. The first line of the book is Robert Cohn was middleweight boxing champion of Princeton. He's a writer too, a novelist, but a second-rate novelist. He's sort of represents all of the character traits that Hemingway despises. He talks rather than acts. He pushes himself on people who don't really want him around. He's needy. He's desperate. He's whiny. He's complainy. He ends up becoming jealous because he's also someone that Brett Ashley 
has slept with and kind of leads along and sort of tolerates his presence. Anyway, all of these people, they meet up in Pamplona for the Festival de San Fermín. They stay at the Hotel Montoya, which is run by this guy named Juanito Montoya, who has a ficción for bulls, a ficcionado, right? He defines, or Jake defines, a ficción as passion. And according to Juanito Montoya, a bullfighter can have a ficción or not. In other words, there are the commercial bullfighters and there are the fighters who have a ficción. Nowadays, they're called bullfighters who are artists, all right? Bullfighting is not a sport. It's an art, all right? Jake, the narrator, also has this a ficción, and he's respected for it by Juanito Montoya. However, he brings all his friends to experience this festival, okay? And they kind of embarrass him because they're drunk all the time. They're sloppy. That's the worst thing for Hemingway, sloppy man. Mike just sloppy, he's drunk. Brett's sloppy with love. You know, Robert Cohn is sloppy about everything. And then in the middle of the story is dropped Pedro Romero, who is this 19-year-old gorgeous bullfighter, okay? Jake, or Hemingway, describes him as far away and dignified, listening very seriously, all right? Brett Ashley ends up seducing him, okay? And the culminating scene of the book, the culminating scene of the book, which I won't ruin for you, okay, is when Robert Cohn discovers that Brett Ashley is with Pedro Romero in this hotel room. And Robert Cohn, who has experience as a boxer, basically beats the hell out of the bullfighter. But it's the way the bullfighter takes the beating. That, that makes him an exemplary character in the Hemingway mystique. It makes him an exemplary character, I would say, in, in what I admire about men. Okay, he's almost like a secular Christ in a way. The most beautiful boy that Jake has ever seen, right? The way he takes this beating, and then the way he goes out the next day and fights the bulls that, he, that he's supposed to fight. That's what makes the, bo the book so powerful to me and so tragic, okay? That Jake sacrifices his reputation among these people that he so respects to give his undeserving friends this experience that they can never, they aren't capable of appreciating. Hemingway also wrote two books specifically about bullfighting. The first was written in 1932 called Death in the Afternoon. It's like a part bullfighting manual. There's a glossary of terms. He explains how to watch a bullfight. He explains how his afficción started, how it developed. But it's a kind of grab bag, bag of a book. This kind of, it includes a short story of his. He talks about his opinion of like George Orwell and William Faulkner. Mm, the best parts are about bullfighting, as I recall. And he talks about how to him, this very, very unique pastime taught him what truth is. How the best bullfighters make it hard for themselves and then make it look easy. He talks about what moral means to him in human behavior. When he sees human behavior and it makes him feel good afterwards. In immoral is when he sees human behavior and it makes him feel bad afterwards. And it's definitely true in bullfighting. When you see a bad bullfight, when you see a bullfight in which neither the bullfighter nor the bull are up for it, it makes you feel bad afterwards. If you see a bullfight in which both the bullfighter and the bull are up for it, you leave with a kind of high that I don't think you can experience anywhere else. Um, he also wrote a book that was published a year before he died called The Dangerous Summer. And that may have the best piece ever written on bullfighting. I think it, in chapter 11, when he wrote about this one bullfight that took place 
on August 15th, 1959. So he's writing about the rivalry. Throughout this book, he's writing about the rivalry that existed between the two best bullfighters in Spain. A guy named Antonio Ordonez and a guy named Luis Miguel Dominguin. Both of these families, by the way, continue to have weight in Spain. Their children and grandchildren continue to be important personages, followed by the pink press and so forth. Anyway, all through this summer, Antonio Ordonez has sort of like surged up and come the best, become the best bullfighter, has sort of taken Luis Miguel Dominguin's place. But they're still competing all throughout the summer. They've both been gored and injured, and they meet in this just tremendous bullfight in which I think all six bulls are finally killed with one kind of plunge of the sword. That's very, very rare in bullfighting, okay? And tremendously moving to see, especially when the lidia or the faena or the bullfighting itself is done with art. The funny thing is, The Dangerous Summer was, was written for Life magazine. They hired him to write 10,000 words, and he wrote 120,000. Many people complained about the book, said it was too long, there were too many digressions. And it was true that that was near the end of his life. He would commit suicide a year later, after a long life of hard living and, and depression. Okay? <clears throat> It's funny, I want to bring into this uh, discussion of these two bullfighting books another book on bullfighting, which was written by a Spanish writer named Manuel Chavez Nogales, which was written in 1935 about Juan Belmonte, okay, who in Death in the Afternoon, Hemingway puts up as the epitome of the modern bullfighter, who basically changed bullfighting, who kind of who was able, with dignity, to put this ideal of a Spanish man on display, right? Juan Belmonte, from Seville, ugly, like his legs were too short, he almost looked deformed, he had this really big overbite, but tremendous, with tremendous sex appeal, and tremendous, like, gancho, pull in front of the crowd. A superstar, an international superstar. And this book that I'm talking about, written by Manuel Chavez Nogales, is called Juan Belmonte, Matador de Toros, Su Vida y Hazañas, which is Juan Belmonte, Bullfighter, His Life and Exploits. And I would say Manuel Chavez Nogales writes it in the voice of Juan Belmonte, without Juan Belmonte's permission. So it's kind of like new journalism before new journalism existed. Juan Belmonte, who Hemingway knew and respected, okay, and held up as the kind of, was held up as, the, as perfection when he was in his prime as the modern bullfighter, also committed suicide a year after Hemingway did. In 1962, when he was 69 years old, get this, he blew his head off, but this is how he kills himself. He wakes up in the morning, goes to Mass, receives communion, goes to the house of his lover. It's like his secret lover. His lover that he won't bring out in public, okay? His former maid. Although he came from a very, very poor background too. Grew up in this neighborhood called Triana, all right? But he triumphed. And he has this finca, this ranch outside Seville. So he goes to his lover's house, okay? Signs some photographs for her gives her some gifts in an envelope full of cash, then goes to his finca, his ranch, locks himself in his office, and blows his head off. That pistol that he shot himself with is now in a civilian museum. Okay? So, they say about Juan Belmonte that he killed himself because he could no longer get it up. All right? He was a guy who fell in love easily, had a lot of lovers, but he was unable to consummate that love all right? He was unable to, to make love anymore, and so he considered himself less of a man. And they say, or maybe it's part of the rumor or the legend, that was why he eventually killed himself. Okay? Again, all about this mystique of a certain type of macho iberico, this man who acts with passion and decisiveness that Hemingway held up 
as the perfect kind of man. Okay, good people. I was hoping to get all of Hemingway's books into this one video, but it's not going to be possible. And I don't want to skimp on the last two Hemingway works that I plan to talk about. So I'll do a second part. Let me just end this video by saying that if you haven't read The Sun Also Rises, if you haven't read Fiesta, I can't rend it, recommend it more highly. I, as I say, I think it's Hemingway's masterpiece, his most seamless book. Mm. It planted the seed of Spain in me, the seed of destiny, I would say, which ultimately maybe led to me living here for the last 17 years. I would also read, if you're into bullfighting, if you're curious about it, I would definitely recommend Death in the Afternoon. It's not the best of his books, but there are sections in that book that stand up to anything that he's ever written. And again, it explains bullfighting to an American reader quite well. The other book, The Dangerous Summer, I read it years ago, but I was re I re I was reacquainted with it specifically to chapter 11 in an anthology of texts about Spain, either individual pieces and also excerpts from larger books. This book is called Spain in Mind, and it was compiled by the editor Alice Lechese Powers. I think I'm pronouncing that right. I would buy that book because it will give you a taste of many writers who wrote about Spain from many different points in time. Okay? Also, Alice Lechese Powers did me the favor and was kind enough to write a very, very useful and kind blurb for my book, My Half Orange, A Story of Love and Language in Seville. So, anyway, I'll see you in the next video about Hemingway.